So that's the man of the hour we don't make dreams possible. Like no don't come from no shit like this glamorous rap video. So you know what I mean? The road to success can be filled with all types of roadblocks. Just ask the Massachusetts born rapper Millie's. Now he's been building his reputation in the underground rap scene since around the late 2000s. And over the past couple of years, well, all that hard work has finally begun to pay off. Millie's made the decision at only 14 years old to jump into the local rap battles and ciphers. A year later, he'd been recording in a studio for the first time before dropping his debut mixtape in 2009. A street rapper through and through, Millie's knew that if he didn't get himself off the block, well then things they were gonna turn nasty. After all, this is a dude who lost his best friend when he was just a teenager. And when, uh, well, he started having to dodge charges himself, well, he knew it was time for a lifestyle change. Now, if you know what kind of product Millie's was moving back in the day, well, place your guesses in the comments down below. For everyone else, let's get into our latest episode of Before They Are Famous. Millie's was born Miles Lockwood in Boston Hospital on February 17th, sometime in the late 1980s or early 1990s. Now he's a little coy about his exact age. That being said, Miles, he grew up in a single parent household and he became very much a product of his hometown, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Now raised on Pearl Street near Central Square, well this son of an art teacher and a Lesley University professor, well he attended Graham and Parks Middle School and he once told Report Card Radio, everything I learned comes from Cambridge, that city learned me everything I know. Now as a kid, Miles, he was placed in a special education classroom in the sixth grade. Now this was a learning style that would continue throughout his high school career at Cambridge Ringe and Latin, where he often found himself getting into trouble before eventually even getting kicked out during freshman year. That's after school officials say that he punched the teacher, something Miles himself, well, he's always denied having done. I had to be into whatever I was being taught. So like English class, I could do English class because I was into rapping. I couldn't sit through like math. I couldn't sit through science. And I, I was getting in fights, you know, things of that nature. So that all built up. So next he was off to Seaport Academy in Charlestown, a school whose mission statement is to serve students who haven't been able to achieve their goals in a traditional school setting. Now Miles, he would wind up graduating from here in the mid 2000s, but after he did so, well he found himself immersed in the Cambridge drug trade. Like yo, where I grew up is so different from a lot of places cause um, it's really, I mean, a lot of people, well, let me just start with what it is. I'm from Cambridge, Mass. That's the home of Harlem College and the home of MIT, like some of the LS schools, you know what I mean? That's like the public's perception of this shit. We grew up like to us as sports, drugs, and entertainment. Miles says that he started selling drugs in the seventh grade. Ultimately, this led to some run ins with the law. Now, he faced three felony charges all before turning 20 years old, including charges of armed robbery and conspiracy to traffic cocaine. And then I uh, ended up uh, getting uh, convicted of, um, I, I got caught with, um, I got caught with over 14 um, grams of crack or whatever. He beat those first two raps, but on a separate cocaine trafficking charge, while he wound up pleading out to lesser charges of drug possession and operating under the influence. Needless to say, it was an extremely difficult and trying time. Not only was he dealing with the cops, but his best friend, he also lost his life at the age of just 14 years old. Now at that point, well, Miles, he was convinced that he himself, well, he wouldn't live to see 18. Then when his two other best friends ended up being put away for life in prison, well, Miles knew that he needed to change how he was moving. He told the Boston Herald, I don't want to be the dude in jail like Dan. If I didn't catch that case, I could have been the greatest rapper ever. So Miles quit selling drugs to concentrate fully on one thing and one thing only, becoming the best damn rapper to ever emanate out of the state of Massachusetts. Now when it comes to his rapping career, well I guess we should really start off with his moniker, with his first name being Miles, well you might think that Millie's is simply a riff off his government handle, but according to Miles himself, well he was given his nickname by local Cambridge basketball legend, Lewis Ford. But the reasons for which Ford gave him his name, well they remain unclear to him. Now regardless with his rap name in hand, well Millie's began messing around with his musical influences to create his own type of sound. Now as a kid, he listened to a ton of R&B, especially boys to men. In fact, he says that he and his mom, they used to bond over their music all the time. He told Double XL, that's like a bond me and my mom would share. Boys to men, Drew Hill, all those R&B groups. I really came up knowing every single ad lib, singing them songs, and I feel like those songs kind of contributed to how I write music. 
They got something in their song structure. They make the song really climax at the height of the song around the third verse. Now, of course, Billy, he also grew up listening to a ton of hip hop acts. We're talking Biggie Smalls, Mob Deep, Nas, Dipset, Eminem, Lil Wayne, Boozy, and a whole bunch more. I always been, you know, like musically inclined. I always used to memorize every song that came on the radio. Things like that started out. So by the late 2000s, Will Millie's, he was getting really serious about his potential career in hip hop. Now that's when he landed on the Boston OG Daniel Laurent's mixtape titled School of Hard Knocks. Now thanks to that feature, he ended up getting a ton of airplay around the city of Boston. He then utilized that momentum by opening a MySpace profile to share his music with others before dropping his first mixtape, White Boy Like Me, in 2009. Knowing that he needed to keep his name in circulation to truly accomplish his goals, Will Millie's hit the streets of Massachusetts to hand out copies of his tape to anyone willing to take them. Heck, he'd even jump out of his vehicle, install traffic, just to start throwing copies through people's car windows. Making the music, that's, that's like a quarter of the battle. You gotta get out there, you, you gotta have your image right. What's your story, who are you? You know what I mean, what do you offer to the world? Once you establish that, then you gotta get on your promotional ground, your internet, in the streets. Next, he teamed up with a Boston radio station program known as Launchpad, as well as websites like reptabean.com and newenglandhiphop.com to continue sharing his project with a larger and larger audience. The only problem was, well, the hip hop scene in Cambridge and Boston, well, it was more than a little limited. So in 2011, Will Millies, he began traveling to New York City to further extend his reach and began documenting his experience with a vlog known as White Boy Like Me. Two years later, Will Millies, he finally dropped his first studio album, Future Memories, and that same year he met Jadakiss, who then hopped onto a remix of his song, The Plug, in 2013. Now that song would pick up some serious momentum, but around the same time, Will Millie says that he was going through the darkest period of his personal life. Now depression and anxiety, they began to eat away at him, but thankfully he wouldn't give up because what happened next, it would finally have Millie's breaking on through to the other side. After taking a short amount of time off to take care of himself, Will Millie's regrouped and then recorded and released the EP known as The Short Bus in 2016. Now it would become the first in a series of big events in his life. Shortly thereafter, he was being interviewed by Static Selector on Shade 45 when he dropped this unbelievable freestyle on the world. A few months later, he was on Funk Flex's Hot 97 program in New York City and he delivered some more legendary bars. That's called mother bars. You know nothing about that. Then during the BET Hip Hop Awards, he delivered one of the most powerful ciphers of the year. After another MC scheduled for the spot, well, they were a no show. Good for him. Millie says that he practiced over 20 hours on that one BET verse alone. Now with more eyes on him than ever before, Will Millie's decided to embark on his opus, an extended series known as Blanco. The first entry arrived in 2018, and since then there have been a further three sequels, all of which have grown progressively more and more critically acclaimed and commercially successful. Especially when it comes to more recent singles like Ashes in the Maybach and Closure. Now that he's here, the question really is, how far can Millie's climb? I think I'll leave that up to him to decide, but needless to say, I'm not putting any limit on it. As for what happens next, well, I guess that's another story for another video because this, of course, is before they are famous. As always, guys, let us know who to feature next. We drop a video each and every day, and I'll see you guys in another one. All right.